its frenzy, happily ever after, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. So it is March. There's so much in the garden happening this week. I can't even, I can't even. Finally got the raised beds in. I've got a few summer flowers already planted. Almost all of our bulbs are actually petering out. We've got just a few tulips left on the pansies are probably giving us our, their last show of the season um, but so much is happening and a lot of our summer plants are actually coming up and starting to bloom it's ridiculous we've got rowena we've got pinkushi flowers we've got daisies things that weren't even green this time last year have blooms our roses around the corner blooms the piggy heart rose is blooming I'm so excited. We just had a big rain and I finished mulching with the help of my mom and brother. Thank you guys so much. Um, yesterday. So while the mulch is fresh, while the flowers are rained on, we're going to go ahead and give you a March garden tour from seeds to cyclamen. We will go the whole distance. Um, I'm really excited. I wanted to wait another week or two because the wisteria has blooms, the pincushion plants have blooms, or buds, they have buds, uh, the ranunculus has buds, so I think many are killing the lambs here. Come on. Not to put chicken wire there, because she refuses to stop going under that little spot. Look. So many things have buds. I wanted to wait another week and hopefully get more blooms for you. Um, but since we just finished the mulch last night and it looks fabulous and under all my big trees, the mulch never stays fabulous for long. I figured, let's go ahead and do it. And then if next week we get a whole bunch of blooms, we'll come back with a special bloom tour. I don't know. We'll see you the next month for sure. So let's go ahead and go over to the milk jugs and give you the last update on milk jugs for the season because we're going to be planting those milk jugs out in the next two weeks. So next month, there will be a milk jugs update. They'll be in the garden. We will have a garden plant milk jug update. I'm so excited. Let's go, Vic. Stay out of the lambs eating. All right, so before we go check on our seeds, I just want to share with you my favorite new view of the raised beds. I'm going to be putting vegetables and cut flowers in here. I'm going to have a little seating area. I have my little table and chairs down the way. And obviously, we still need to, we still need a lot. This is a very big work in progress, but look how fabulous it looks so far. Ah! Okay, let's go down to the seeds. All right, so obviously my promise not to plant more seeds uh, failed and I planted a whole new section over here, but most of the things we planted together from Walmart are germinating. Look at those marigolds. Our milkweed is doing great. It's just, it's probably almost ready to move out, especially with that little spider in that first one. We've got zinnias that are <laughs> bursting out the door. All of our foxglove probably just about ready to get out of there. Sorry, y'all, I'm falling over. Then there's the rest of our little Walmart seeds, some amaranth that's all sprouting. Our fever few has teeny tiny little seeds our white cone flowers. Look at all those little babies. And our alyssum is doing fabulous. So hopefully in the next couple weeks, we will clear out the weed patch and start putting these things in the garden mid-March. So it's the first week in March, the next 10 days. In the meantime, I'm still trying to decide if I want compost or pea gravel. I had wanted compost just around the front where I'm doing the little garden beds and pea gravel everywhere else. But I kind of think 
the pea gravel, which is this white color, that the it won't look as good against the garden beds. That if this was all dark, pretty mulch, it would look so much better, like the contrast. So our roses, though, look at this. Look at the Peggy Martin rose. And another week or two, this baby is going to be a stunner. We planted this late last season. So it's only been in the ground for about six months. And you can see it has these itty bitty baby roses. <coughs> and the goal is to get it to cover the entire fence so that it hides a lot of this area. But it has just such pretty blooms. And you can see blooms, 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 blooms. Look up here. Like this is all going to be blooms. It's going to be so pretty. And we'll just have a riot of pink blooms instead of this mess. That'll be nice. Our one milkweed plant that my, my landscaper, he's not a landscaper, my grass cutter dude, Daniel, sweet Daniel, he uh, thought it was a weed. It's not his fault. This part of the cardboard came off. And so he weed eated all of this area, including my milkweed. And it's still green. It's still got a leaf. So like, it's not dead, but I sent him a video. And I was like, okay, it's going to be very obvious very soon. This whole area will be planted up. But don't weed eat this. <laughs> oh, the beds from another angle. I love this so much. I cannot wait until they are full and happy and pretty, pretty, pretty. Hey, bitty, bitty. Come here, bitty. Good girl. Yeah, you're having so much fun. Bitty loves it out here. But see, this is the pea gravel. So there's just not a lot of a definition as opposed to this compost or mulch that I use. Huh? Oh, the garden. So you can see right up here, I'm planning to extend everything just to the end here. So I've got this bench that matches my table and chairs. And I think I'm going to plant, I bought these two Texas sage plants to put on either side. They get really big. And I'm going to put a Rose of Sharon behind it. I'm not going to do a whole garden bed over here, but I just want some big plants that will fill in, attract pollinators, and give us kind of a visual stop to the garden on that side. So we've still got to figure it out with the slope. If this is exactly the like spot I want it, especially because right now all the sticks for the raised beds are behind it, but... It's gonna look really pretty once it's all figured out. But in the meantime, this little garden bed is coming along. Look at the oak leaf hydrangea. I will link below where y'all helped me replant this. This was volunteers from mom's oak leaf hydrangea that came up in her yard and we transplanted it over here yes, last year. I had to put an umbrella over it for like a month. But obviously it is finally rooted in and loving its spot and I am really hoping that after a whole year in the ground because we planted it here last March it will bloom for us this year we didn't get any blooms last year but you know last year was the first year I'm hoping this year bloom baby bloom I did already start to plant out a few summer annuals like these little daisies I prefer the lighter pink but I have some super tunia vista bubble gum in this bed and if it doesn't come back which it doesn't look like it is the ones down the way i'll show you have leaves and blooms already um i'm still i know i will replant this one because i love how it looks spilling out of this orb so instead of a light pink and a light pink i wanted the dark color next to the light pink so pretty all right across the way 
This rose that we've put up onto the house is just starting to bud out, so hopefully we will get blooms there soon. This one right here is about to bloom. And then the Gara, that still looks fabulous. I've been collecting dirt from all these projects to put in the raised bed, so I've got kind of a collection of weird stuff here. And then we've got our cone flowers actually coming in early, but the three Gara that I have on this side are not coming back. So I'm not sure why that is, but if they never come back this season, I will probably just replace them at the end of the season. Hate to replace them now, but I kind of want to. On the other hand, ooh, something's been digging over here. Look at this. Why are you digging in my beds there? chipmunks squirrels but the angelonia is definitely coming back that's fabulous and on the other hand my tulips are just about going out of bloom i only have a few that are still pretty and it just rained so they are all kind of funky looking but I'm going to go ahead, I think, and I got some ribbon. I'm going to tie ribbon around these tall purple ones because the white and pink ones were so, you can see the height difference there, so much shorter, like six inches shorter. And next year when I replant these, I want to be able to put the short ones up front and the tall double ones further back. So work on that. All of the glads are coming up in the back there, even the ones we just planted can see the difference in last year's glads and the ones we just planted. You can also see the iris is coming up in front. I've got glads and iris all throughout this back border. I'm still hoping all of these are baby foxglove, but I'm not sure yet. If they're not. If they're weeds, we'll pull them later, but I would rather pull mature weeds than baby foxgloves. Hydrangea is obviously starting to leaf out. My homestead verbena is rooting in everywhere and starting to bloom, which is so fun. And the pansies are, well, they're just about done for the season, but we're going to leave them till the stuff from the milk jugs is ready to plant up here because I'll be replacing these fall spring annuals with pretty, pretty summer annuals. And then right back here, this is all going to be foxglove. Right, Biddy? That's Biddy's spot under the porch. Our poppy, our one poppy you guys helped me plant out is thriving. Still no blooms, but it's working on it. And then these are all uh, ranunculus. And the muscari. This little corner is such a weird hubbub of um, the cotton candy pansies, the blue muscari, the tulips, and then I have two mums here, which this one looks like it's coming back, and this one is really struggling. But these are my favorite. I'll try to put a picture up on the screen. These are my favorite pink mums, so I will be so sad if this one doesn't make it. I wanted four of them, and I only got two, and so if one doesn't make it, and I only have one, I will literally cry. Betty, you want to show them up here around the tree? Come on. All right, so around the tree garden is looking fabulous. We've got more of those cotton candy pansies. Our agapanthus is coming in. That was another transplant from mom's garden that we divided. So they didn't bloom for us last year. I am really hoping they will this year. But all of this is ranunculus that, as you can see, are about to bloom for us. So I cannot wait. I cannot wait. This is my first year ever growing ranunculus, so I was really worried we wouldn't get any blooms. But so far, so good. Our Veronica, that's blue Veronica, is coming in. We've got lots of these uh, daffodils that are coming up, which I planted two years ago. They didn't bloom last year. They didn't even grow last year, so I thought they were all dead. They are 
literally all coming up this year, but we typically need cold time for daffodils here in the south. So I'm not sure that just because they're coming up does not mean they'll bloom. Uh, here's my other daisies. And you can see here was another one of those super tunias. So we'll see. I do think both of these hydrangeas are dead, but this hydrangea is not dead. So, you know. And then here's the most exciting part of the garden right now. So this little corner, my pincushion plants are starting to bloom. Look at this. Focus. I'm so excited. If you guys watched any of my gardening videos last year, you know that none of these, all three of these last year grew foliage. They never bloomed. They had a few blooms from the nursery and then they never bloomed all season. I even put extra fertilizer on them halfway through the season. Made no difference. And now covered in blooms. So here's to hoping that they bloom all season. Cause that's one of the reasons I wanted them is people say that pincushion flowers typically bloom from, you know, beginning of the season all through the end, just riot to blooms and they look much better this year. Now, obviously this one loves its life way more than this one. They were all the same size when I planted them. So we'll see if maybe by the end of the season, they are supposed to be spaced out enough to kind of grow together, but that may take a couple years. Our hydrangea, and then look up here. Our little wisteria that could. It's putting out leaves all the way up around the tree. And I cannot wait for this guy to bloom. It's got literally like one bud right here right now. Woo -hoo -hoo. That makes me very excited. One of our new flag irises I just planted and the salvia, which I wanted all white salvia, but I found these two plants with these mix of white and blue plants together. Couldn't find a third one. So I just did blue, white and blue, white and blue. They'll look fine. Let's pop around on the other side. They do need deadheaded already, but I think they will fill in this whole area. And then I'm going to do, you can see, this is where we planted all of our lilies, tiger lilies and purple lilies. And they are already starting to come up, which is so exciting. But right over here, I'm going to plant a few cone flowers. And then I planted pink salvia all throughout here last year because it was all free. I had a whole bunch of it and so far none of it's coming back. We'll find out if it does. Oh, look at the bee. Makes me so happy. Any pink salvia that comes up can just live where it lives this year because they seem to do so much better when you don't transplant them. Then right here, more of those glads we just planted and all of these little drumstick alliums. So I've never planted drumstick alliums before, but they're all putting up foliage. We also have our three peonies. One, two, Three. This one's not doing as hot, but we'll see. Uh, the peonies down in the shady part of the garden are doing fabulous, but putting the three up here, they do get shade from this tree, but not as much shade as down the way. So this is kind of an experiment. These are all Sarah Bernhardt tubers from Walmart, $5 each. And we're going to see if they like this environment or not. If they don't, $15 wasted, which will be sad, but if they do, I will be very happy to have a little peony trio here. This Laura Pedlum is still not nearly as happy as the other two, but you know, it is putting out leaves. So same with the rose next to it. This little knockout is never as happy as the other ones, but then we're back to our pansies. 
I think these burgundy pansies are going to be the first ones to go. They bloomed the absolute best for us in fall and winter, and now they are petering out first. So, you know, I'll take it. They bloomed for us all season. Whereas the cotton candy ones did not bloom nearly as much in fall and winter, and they are going to town now. So, you know, win some, you lose some. Let's head on down to the other half of the garden. So this side doesn't get as much sun. This is the shade garden down here. So it is never quite as colorful as this half. But before we head that way, I just wanted to remind you, pretty pink mums that I'm trying desperately to hope grow. Maybe I should fertilize them. Will that stress it out? I have one green leaf, I want more. Um, at the same time as I planted those, I planted mums and these, and you can see how they're doing. I've got buds, I've got little white mum buds. So I need to plant these out in the garden before they bloom and uh, <laughs> plant these up for summer. I'm gonna put super tunia uh, white out in these, the white blooms like we did last season. They look so pretty spilling out of the containers. But in the garden, we have our big lace cap hydrangea starting to put on all the green just leaves as far as you can see. Mom accidentally uh, ripped out a huge chunk of lamb's ear when we were redoing the drip hose here, but it actually worked out. I used that entire section to move my little stepping stone further towards the side of the house. I think I'm going to go ahead and get more mulch and mulch all the way up to the house this year. The last two years, I've been trying to mess with the drainage, which is why I put the rocks here, um, because it was just washing the mulch away. But I think I finally crossed my fingers, knock on wood, clean my wrists. It's all dirty. Uh, got that under control. And so I'm going to try mulching all the way to the house because I hate how this looks. This definition between the two is awful. So regardless, this needed to be moved closer because it was right here, which used to be a path and is now hydrangea. And it allowed me to move all of this over here where Biddy keeps trampling it. So I've got four or five new plants here. Got a couple new plants here. Got a couple plants back here. And I'm going to try to save them so that Biddy, like she can go under the porch from back here or the other side. She just prefers here, whatever. The, uh, the pink mascari is beautiful, but it, uh, it only has shent up one little shoot as opposed to the blue is sending up multiple shoots. So that's a little disappointing, but it's still pretty. And hopefully next year, you know, it will keep naturalizing, multiply, and we'll have more and more every year. So this is only its first year. We did get blooms. I did plant three pink mist pin cushions or scabiosa here which is very similar to the pin cushions down the way, except it is a more uh, pink, pink bloom. Gross bug. So that will be fun, and it will give us a little bit more of a perennial here. I had some perennial salvia in here, but it is, it is gone. I think the hydrangea choked it out. So I'm going to put uh, my pink bubblegum super tunia vista here this year let it spill all in this area and under the hydrangea then we'll have some height here i've got some salvia coming in the blue perennial kind we've got a barbara mitchell daylily that has still not bloomed for us but this is its first full year in the garden since i moved it last spring so hopefully it will bloom this year and then one two three short purple cone flowers as opposed to around the corner where we have all tall cone flowers. Then we have a little wave of ranunculus and a 
Homestead Verbena, which is starting to put out blooms. More tulips. We've got several box gloves back in here. Look at that one. Hopefully bloom for us. And these knockout roses are just loaded with buds. So they will be blooming for us soon, soon, soon. The Laura Pedlum is just about going out of bloom, but it was glorious for the whole last month. All three of these just loaded with buds. Although I'm not sure why these two bushes are arcing so much. And this one is more straight up and down. These two are also bigger. I'm guessing these two are growing. The sun comes this way. So they're obviously going up and out towards the sun, but I don't know why not they're not going straight up. And then this one is kind of shaded by the first two. So butterfly bush leafing out, probably be able to cut that back at the end of the month and uh, let it just green out whatever is going to green out. Lots of iris and glads coming up. Another knockout. My salvia here does not seem to be coming back, which is frustrating, but at the same time, it allows us a whole little corner to put something new and fun in. So we've got three foxgloves, three mums, tulips. Our pentas around the crepe myrtle are coming back. We've got five supertunia vista pink bubble gums all coming back around here. And the rest are ranunculus, which look fabulous. But this tall one, for some reason, is the happiest and putting out buds. So hopefully they will all bloom. But if not, we have one weirdly tall one that is going to bloom. Salvia that is alive. <laughs> ah, butterfly bush. More tulips. Foxglove. Look how big this is going to be. Look at it. Ah. And another knockout rose, which is also putting up blooms, 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 blooms everywhere. And now we are in the shade garden. So if you've been watching my videos for the last month, this is the main place we've been working. And look how worth it it is. We have our best Sarah Bernhardt peony here. And then it's officially caterpillar season because I noticed that earlier this morning. Look, look at these little caterpillars. They are always all over my garden and house this time of year. And I don't know what type of caterpillars these uh, are and if I should be concerned. To me, they just look like standard garden caterpillars. Same ones you played with as a kid. Anyways, we've got a Festiva Maxima. Festiva Maxima. This one, finally putting up a little baby. Shoot, peony green. So exciting. The Shirley Temple tuber here, I think, is gone. This one was putting out roots, but still nothing above the surface but you can see a much better look at all of the lupin leaves back here. Another Sarah Bernhardt peony that's loving its life. Then we have another endless summer hydrangea. This foxtail fern that I transplanted from my porch because I found the most beautiful uh, fuchsia plant that I really wanted, but it needs complete shade. So I put it on my porch and this guy transplanted out here. My hibiscus. This was supposed to be ballet slippers and it's something completely different. It's not pink at all. It's white. So I'm this close to ripping it out because last year it grew, but it only ever grew to like a foot, two feet and it never bloomed. The first year it was in, it gave us one bloom. So it's been in the ground for two years. This will be its third year. And it's given us exactly one bloom. And I think it's because it doesn't get enough sun back here. So we may move it down to the sun part of the yard. It's not the one I wanted. I wanted the pink one. So we may just give it away. 
My Vitex, on the other hand, like, still need to work on this mess, but it is leafing out. It is going to do fabulous. This was an end of the year clearance plant, and it is supposed to get 25 feet tall and wide. So the longer I live here, the longer it will fill in this area, which is the goal. I want it to soften this whole side of the house. That just looks like, what's it look like, Biddy? Yeah, poop, your favorite. So that's pretty much it for this half of the yard. We've got some glads coming in, some more peonies. All the peony tubers back here are not really doing nearly as much growth, but like they do still have eyes and growth to them. So I'm guessing it's just because they are in a shadier location. And as the sun, you know, hits this part of the garden, they will grow up. Won't this look better if there's mulch all the way back to the house? And last but not least, while I have my Super Tunia Vista bubble gums coming back in all the way across, this one is going crazy and blooming. Cannot wait for those pink blooms everywhere. I love them so much. So that is it for the March garden tour. Like I said, if any of these buds open up before I'm done editing this video, I will put them at the end. Um, so you might know before I do, but I am just, I'm just excited. I mean, this year, everything is blooming so much earlier than normal, but I put in so many more perennials and blooms that will come back and return. This time last year, I will leave a link. I was literally cleaning out the garden and mulching the middle of March last year, not the end of February. And all I had was lamb's ear, pretty much. The Laura Pedalum, the lamb's ear. I had a few iris and glads that I was just planting this time last year. So go check out that video and then come compare because while it is not the perfect garden, it is so much more than what it was and I am so proud of it. It makes me very happy. So I cannot wait to show you next month all the buds turn to blooms and I will see you later. Bye.